let's imagine that you have to graph something on graph paper with, with, with the ruler. And let's imagine also that we're starting like we do in this class with a mass versus weight. Now this, this is not a scale, this is a balance. This is used to measure mass. This, these two, these two are scales. This is a scale that you can actually use to measure force. This can measure force also, but when at a constant velocity, standing on something, this measures the normal force, which is the same size as the weight. So anyway, scales for force, balances for mass. And your task is to measure the mass and weight of a cell phone and uh, maybe a pen, a uh, calculator, uh, your physics textbook, which requires some work because some of the capacity of the scales and the balances aren't too great, and especially and most importantly, the CRC Handbook of Chemistry and Physics. I just spend evenings reading this thing, entire weekends I have spent just reading all the details of this beautiful little baby right here. Mm. Anyway, let's learn physics. Graphing data properly on paper and finding the relationship between two variables. Let's take a look at this data. The object description, the mass in grams, the mass in kilograms, which we're going to use in the graph, and the weight in newtons. Notice that the mass does not have a direction. It's the quantity of matter or the resistance to acceleration, the inertia of an object, kilograms, and the weight is in newtons, and this does have a direction. As with every other force, it's a vector. Force is down, the weight is down. Anyway, 2137.4, 1241.2, 290 Wait a minute, were, the, were, this even, were these even measured on the same balance? Because it looks like this has, well this one measures to the, I guess there's no decimal point like there is here. So that's like 290 grams and this is 480 grams exactly. This is 271, that's a one decimal point, like a tenth of a gram. These are to the hundredths of a gram. Now what, wait, tenths of a gram, one gram, hundredths of a gram, how did, which is correct? Well, if you look at this little thing right here, if you look at these things, you can always estimate that last digit being the hundredths of a gram. So the last uh, one, two, three, four, five, those five are measured correctly. These are not. Anyway, then when you're converting to kilograms, you divide by a thousand, move the decimal point three to the left and leave the number as it is. And then we have this. This is a scale, two and a half newtons is the biggest one. And you could probably like 2.16. So hundredths of a newton also, We're not using dynes. That's not the uh, meter kilogram second system using newtons. So like 1.73. Uh, 1.72, that's to the hundredths also. So this one, none of these are quite good. That one's good, that one's good. Oh, the last group is actually pretty good based on this scale, because you're looking at hundredths again. Use your instrument to the best of its ability. Now we're gonna graph, we're gonna graph mass versus weight, and on the x-axis versus the y-axis, on the x-axis you put what is considered to be the independent variable, the one that doesn't change, or the time, or the one that you as the experimenter, that's the one that you determine. And then you change this one to see what happens on this one, the dependent variable. And mass is considered to be unchanging, so we're gonna put that on the x-axis, the independent variable. The weight is considered to be changing that on the y-axis, the dependent variable. So start of the setup, draw the axis, the x-axis, the y-axis, leave space over here, leave space over here for the axis label, the axis label, and for all the numbering you're gonna do here, and put a title at the top. That uh, title's kind of important, so make sure that you do that. Now, the scale, scale is important, not this scale, totally different kind of scale. And what we're looking at here is just the mass in kilograms versus the weight, we're not gonna deal with this we're not going to deal with this. We we'll think about them later, but then don't actually cross it out in your data table. I always leave a beautiful good copy. But take your mass versus your weight, and we're looking at a maximum of 2.137 and a maximum of uh, 3.6. And the minima down here, this is uh, 8 grams, 
and that, that's really close to zero. So we're going to have a zero to a little more than two on the mass axis, the x-axis, and for the weight, a zero to uh, about four on the y-axis. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, at the 18, you can put a 3.6 there, right? 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1. 1.2, 1 1.4, 1 1.6, 1 1.8, 2. 3 point, okay, so 0 0.2. This is a 1, 2, 3, 4, this is 1. And 1, 2, 3, 4, this is 4. 2.0, 3.0. So on this axis, it's not, you can't quite stretch it out enough. You want to use as much of the paper as you possibly can. This by the way, is the zero and the zero. And if you want to put one of those little funny breaks in, you can't put it in the middle of a graph. You have to put it at the beginning. So if there is a, a lot of data that doesn't exist down here by the zeros, then you can put in a break to focus on the actual data and put the graph data and make it nice and big on the piece of paper, which is what you want to do. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 2.1, 2.2, and it's going to only use maybe two-thirds of the page in this x dimension, but it's too convenient to do it otherwise. So we're going to have a graph that does extend just that much of the page. Not the greatest, but in hand graphing, whatever, it works all right. Then you're just going to graph the x and the y. Here's the x column, here's the y column. 2.1374, 2.1, 2.2, 2 2.1374 would be here. So we write at that position, and that corresponds to a 3.6. So 2.1, 3.6, right here. That's about where that point is. And then you just keep on doing it for all these different points. Back in a minute. Notice that there are a lot of small masses down here, which we already knew by looking at it. There are very few large masses up here, and there's a big gap. So you have one point here, one point here, random stray mark that should probably be erased from a pen. And then you should probably find more masses in this region, more masses in that region to fill it out. And uh, this, you'll notice, since it's experimental data, it does wiggly jiggly. You're not going to want to connect the points. Don't ever connect the data points in real data. What you're going to want to do is try to line up this thing, not just connecting the first point and the last point, lining it up like this maybe. This is covered. That's not covered. These are not covered down here. Move it. Oh, oh. See the variation. What you're trying to do is draw a best fit line, not just connecting the first point and the last point, not just connecting the zero down here and that last point. But doing the best you can to draw a best fit line, kind of like this. See what happens. Pencil's better. But notice that there's some, some points above the line here and one point below it. So it's probably shifted down a little bit. If you have a pencil, you can actually erase this thing. But what you want is a line that looks kind of like that, but this bottom end shifted up so the slope is a little bit off. Then what you want to do is find the slope. Is the rise over the run, run not that, <laughs> rise over the run, or the delta y, the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values. And you want to find a convenient point down below and a convenient point up above, like where it crosses, like right about here. That is a nice, convenient point. And that would be, it's not a data point. You can't choose a data point unless it's exactly on the line. That would be 2.2.6. Y value would be a 4.4. 4. And then down here, some convenient point down at this bottom end, probably this one. Look at that, that's a convenient point. Again, not a data point, some point where it crosses at a, at a crosshair. And this would be... 0 0.0, the x value 0 0.5, and the y value would be 0 0.8. And then find the difference between the y values. 4.4.8 is uh, 3.6. It rises, it goes up 3.6, 3.6, and the units are newtons. And in the x, 2.6 minus 0.5 is 2.1, divided by 2.1 kilograms. 
that is the slope. That is what we call the M in the equation. 3.6 divided by 2.1 is 1.71 newtons per kilogram. Don't forget the units of newtons per kilogram. Now, using the Y equals MX plus B, B is, well, B is pretty much zero. You know it's going to be zero, so we're just going to kind of ignore that. And the Y, what's on the Y axis? It's uh, weight, weight. Weight is equal to uh, slope, it's not mass. Slope is uh, 1.71, 1.71 newtons per kilogram multiplied by the uh, what's on the x-axis, the mass, mass. So here is your equation, again, ignoring the very small y-intercept, assuming that it is zero. With better data on a computer, you'd probably get that. Here's what the graph looks like. Weight, mass, 1.71 newtons per kilogram. So for every kilogram, <laughs> for every kilogram of mass, there's 1.71 newtons of weight. And what causes weight? Uh... Actually, it's a gravitational field, and it turns out that that thing right there, that is the gravitational field strength. We can call that a little g, and this would be w equals mg. See that equation right there? That is a very significant equation. That is the relationship between weight and mass, with g being the gravitational field strength, or commonly called the gravitational acceleration, the acceleration of gravity. But here it's a 1.71. If you know anything about physics, you know that here on Earth, that's a 9.8. It's almost a 10 newtons of weight for every kilogram of mass. Huh. That's, uh, that's, what? oh, huh. Somebody must have taken a trip to the moon, because that is the gravitational field strength on the moon. On Earth, this would be, this graph would have a totally different slope. The slope would not be 1.71. The slope would be really close to 9.8 if you measured everything properly. And there you go. W equals mg derived with simple measurements of mass and weight and a graph. This, by the way, is how they used to just, that's is how they used to determine relationships. You look at the numbers, you graph the numbers, you find a consistent relationship, you find the slope of the graph. There you go. Here's the relationship between weight and mass and the gravitational field strength. Enjoy. And that is how the good science ancients used to find relationships. You can do it too. Thanks for watching Learn Physics. And thanks for that thumbs up too. Really helps a lot. New videos most academic weeks. Subscribe for more. I've even got education ideas, Freaky Physics Friday, and Tech Tip Tuesday. And for bicycles, motorcycles, and family adventures, it's my other channel, Bike Physics. You just learned physics.